welcome to Monte Blanco. Welcome to the launch of Ducati's Street Fighter V2. Obviously heavy based on the Panigale V2, so this is a V-twin. Um, but essentially you take a track oriented Panigale, remove the bodywork, make it more comfortable with uh, a larger riding position, comfier seat and higher bars and hey presto, Ducati V2 Street Fighter. Pretty simple recipe that the Ducati have done many times before, take their third bike and convert it into a successful naked bike. Um, Ducati call this their entry into the Street Fighter world if you want to call a naked bike with over 150 horsepower entry. Bit of an awkward one that. So this test is going to take part in two ways. We're going to be on the road, uh, over 100 kilometers of a lovely ride here in Spain and then we're going to be out on track with these bikes which are exactly the same but literally the cats have just fitted the aerodynamic wings which come directly from the V4. So it gives us a little bit more downforce, a little bit more stability, that's the plan. Suspension changes a fraction, we've just changed a few clicks, compression, rebound and preload. Obviously to get it set up for the track, the suspension is fully adjustable, front and rear, with a combination of shallow on the front and sacks on the rear. Okay, let's see what it's about. quick look round the V2 Street Fighter sorry about the wind noise so these are aftermarket wings which are part of the Ducati performance catalog so I think they're about a thousand pound or eleven hundred pounds exactly the same as the V4 Street Fighter everything else on this bike is standard fully adjustable shower forks up front fully adjustable sacks on the rear the wheelbase is longer than the V2 Panigale by 16 mil uh, big massive Brembo stoppers um, the seat is obviously comfier than the Panigale V2 the riding position is more roomier comfier the pegs are lower um, so to do that the suspension has changed slightly it's still the same suspension but the components have changed and the settings have changed because the way the rider sits on the bike has changed styling Ducati tell us this is a joker style face yeah I see that and it's attractive and it's good looking, it's a Ducati, what do you expect? Six axis IMU, lean sensitive braking, lean sensitive traction control, anti wheelie, up and down quick shifter, all work effortlessly. Three rider modes to keep you safe and in the wet mode it's just around 100 horsepower, in four power it's 153 horsepower. This isn't a slow puppy. Good looking though isn't it? Blanco, we've had half a day on road and half a day on track. 
And I've kind of hiding out of the way because it's howling with wind. So I'm trying to get away from the wind noise. So apologies for that. So it is essentially a naked Panigale V2. So you've got a 955cc the engine, 150 horsepower, 74.8 foot pounds of torque, and 178 kilograms. The gearing is slightly shorter, the swinging arm is slightly longer, and obviously you've got the upright riding position, which means there's more room between the seat and the pegs and the bars to make it comfier. The seat is obviously softer and comfier than the Panigale. Suspension is pretty similar. You've got Showa 43 items up front, fully adjustable. Sax shock on the rear, fully adjustable, and a Sax steering damper. Really, Diablo Rosso 4 tyres come as standard and you've got the M4032 Brembo calipers 4.3 full colour dash it's the slightly older dash if you're used to the Multistrada dash which is I think five and a half um, six axis IMU so you've got traction control which is lean sensitive ABS lean sensitive uh, wheelie control um, and the quick shifter which I think I've mentioned on the road light easy fun agile steers excellent um, when you flick between the modes, there's three rider modes, when you go into the wet mode, power is limited to just over 100 horsepower. And you can really feel that, um, and the rider range have increased. And then when you come to the track, you can flick into the sports mode and, and, and have some really good fun. It's, it's a lot easier and enjoyable to ride than the big V4, which is a really aggressive, arm-ripping, powerful bike. This is a lot, lot easier to manage and get along with. Ducati call this the entry into the Street Fighter world, but it's 153 horsepower. So that's got more power than Foggy had in his 916 Superbike. And when you flick into the wet mode, it's still got over 100 horsepower, which is like, what was that, 916 kind of power back in the day? So even though this is the entry level Street Fighter, it's still phenomenally quick and really good fun. Um, in the UK, it's going to be around 15,000 UK pounds. Um, in Europe, obviously, that will change depending on the Euro, Oz, America, etc. But there's no hiding in the fact that's quite an expensive bike. Um, it's not cheap by any standards, but look at it. She just looks lovely. It's got that Ducati styling, it's got that Joker face, um, it's got cutting edge rider aids, it's got great technology, it's easy to ride. Is it as desirable as the Panigale V2? Possibly not. But if you're riding mainly on the road, this is probably a better bike. Be interested to see where it goes against the competition, because I'm a bit unsure who the competition is. Middleweight, 15,000 pound naked bike with 150 horsepower. Anyway, to sum up, good bike, easy to ride in the Panigale V2. Um, but if you're going to start with the Panigale V2 and take all the bodywork off, you're not going to go far wrong, are you? Italian styling, Italian beautiful looks, and excellent rider rates. Thumbs up from this end. Hope you like the video. Don't forget to subscribe, and we'll just keep churning out these videos.